Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a trigonometric expression in terms of another one. We are given that tangent 10 degrees is equal to x, and we're supposed to find tangent 5 degrees in terms of x. All right, there's a couple different approaches for this problem, so I'm going to be presenting different methods here, and let's see how this goes. First of all, I'm going to start with tangent 10 degrees, and I'm not going to write the degree symbol, I hope you don't mind, but it's always in degrees. All right, so we know that tangent 10 is equal to x, how can I go to tangent 5 from there? I know what you're thinking, I'll talk about that a little later, but first of all, I want to present my first approach. So, since tangent 10 is equal to x, from here, by using the double angle formula, I can find tangent 20. Let's go ahead and find that. And of course, tangent 20 means tangent 20 degrees, right? Okay. By using the double angle formula, this is 2x minus 1 over x squared. That is the double angle formula for tangent. Now, I can use the double angle formula one more time and evaluate tangent 40, because 2 times 20 equals 40, and that will be the same thing, but just replace uh, the x or alpha, whatever, the tangent alpha value with 2x over 1 minus x squared. So tangent 40 can be written as 2 tangent 20 divided by 1 minus tangent squared 20. And now we're going to replace, we're going to replace tangent 20 with what it is. So this is going to give us tangent 40 in terms of x. Tangent 20 is equal to 2x over 1 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and replace tangent 20 with that. And that's going to give me the following. Now I just need to simplify this expression. To simplify, let's go ahead and multiply. This is my numerator. And the denominator is going to be, when you expand it, you're going to get a quotient of squares. When you make a common denominator, you're going to get a difference of two squares. Like this. And the denominator of the denominator is going to be 1 minus x squared quantity squared. Great. Now, in order to divide these two complex fractions, let's go ahead and, you know, find the reciprocal of the second one and multiply by the first one. So it's going to look like this. I have 4x over 1 minus x squared multiplied by 1 minus x squared quantity squared divided by this expression right here. And if you expand that one, you're going to get x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1 minus 4x squared. Here, notice that 1 minus x squared and 1 minus x squared squared, one of them is going to cancel out. So we can kind of take out one of these and turn this into 1. And what, just multiply 4x by 1 minus x squared. That's going to give you 4x minus 4x cubed. And we've done this before. You'll probably remember if you looked at other problems like this one. And the bottom one is going to be x to the fourth power minus 6x squared plus 1. But this is just, you know, the tangent 40 value, right? So we can basically, I could probably just erase part of this. That's too long. Okay, great. So now this is tangent 40, but obviously that's not what I need. I do need to find the value of tangent 5, but how are 40 and 5 related? If you think about it, and again, we've done this before. Uh, 40 plus 5 is 45. So tangent 5 can be written in terms of tangent 40. So I can write it as tangent 45, tangent 45 minus 40. And since I know tangent 40 in terms of x, I can find tangent 5 in terms of x. Let's go ahead and use the formula tangent 45 minus tangent 40 divided by 1 plus tangent 45 times tangent 40. Great. So this is the value of tangent 5, and that's what we're trying to find. So let's go ahead and replace um, everything with what it is. Tangent 45 is equal to 1, as you should know. Tangent 40 is right here. Let's go ahead and replace tangent 40 with 4x minus 4x cubed divided by x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1, and then divide it by 1 plus tangent 45, which is 1, times tangent 40, which is 4x minus 4x cubed, divided by x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1. Great. Now, 1 times doesn't really mean anything here, so we don't really even need that as a product. We can just make a common denominator in, uh, in, in the numerator and the denominator, so that's going to give us tangent 5. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. 
And notice that the denominators, once you make common denominator, they're going to be the same, so they'll cancel out. So I just need to worry about the numerators. So I get x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1 minus 4x plus 4x cubed. Notice that we have to negate. And then that is divided by x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1 plus 4x minus 4 x cubed. Great. Let's go ahead and rearrange the terms a little bit. And if there are any like terms, we can kind of combine them. But I don't think there's any like terms. So tangent 5 can be written as x to the fourth power plus 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 1. And that is divided by x to the fourth power minus 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now notice that that both the top and the bottom look like x plus 1 to the fourth power, but the there are minor sign changes. So it's kind of interesting that when you find tangent uh, of 5, you get a structure, a quartic, um, the ratio of two quartic polynomials like this. Anyways, this basically concludes my first method. And I'm going to show you another method to find tangent 5, but it's going to be kind of interesting. Why is it going to be interesting? I can't tell you right now, you'll see why. Okay, in a little bit, you're gonna notice what I'm talking about. So the next thing I'm gonna do is look at this from another perspective. And that's probably what you were thinking when you first saw this problem. So I'm gonna call this second method, but it's not actually second method, but it is second method. What am I talking about? Okay, it'll be clear in a little bit. So the second method, so to speak, is kind of like using the double angle formula in a different way. Because if you think about the relationship between 10 and 5, 5 is half of 10. So why not use the double angle formula backwards? You can call it a half angle if you want. Some people call it half angle. But half angle and double angle, well, whatever. I mean, doesn't really matter. So here's what I'd like to do. I can find tangent 5 directly. How? By using the double angle formula. Tangent 10 can be written as 2 tangent 5 divided by 1 minus tangent squared 5, and we know that it's equal to x, and I can find tangent 5 from here. And it looks a lot easier, right? Okay, I'll tell you a little bit uh, more later on, but let's go ahead and evaluate this simple expression. Let's call tangent 5 u, okay, so that I can use my famous expression 2u, the birthday song. So I get something like 2u, happy birthday, 2u, equals x times the bottom. So it's going to be x minus x times u squared. So I'd like to make this a quadratic equation. You probably already know that I love quadratic equations. And I like using the quadratic formula. Because this probably is not very factorable. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula for this one. But notice that u is my variable. x is uh, treated as a constant. Okay, great. So we're going to be looking for u. And remember, u is equal to tangent 5. Okay, so how do I solve for u? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times c. c is negative x, so I can just write it as x and turn this into a positive sign. Great. Divided by 2a, which is 2x. Okay, so this is tangent 5, but notice that tangent 5 is positive. Well, what is under the radical is positive because it's 4 plus 4x squared. It's always positive if x is a real number. And this expression can only be positive if we write it as, if we write it as negative 2 plus the square root of this expression. And let's, let me write it as 4x squared plus 4. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Let's go ahead and take out a 2 here. I can obviously write this as 2 times the radical x squared plus 1. And if you divide everything by 2, you're going to get the following. You're going to get the square root of x squared plus 1 minus 1 divided by x. I skipped some steps, but they're fairly easy. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Now, this is the tangent 5 value. Now, my the biggest question here is I told you that I was going to tell you something about it, right? We didn't get the same thing, right? Is that surprising? No, it shouldn't be. Sometimes with trigonometric expressions, we get different results. Why is that happening? Because if you take this expression, this quartic thing, like the gigantic expression, and set it equal to that, you're going to get a true statement. But that's going to give you another equation 
one of whose roots is tangent 5. Isn't that interesting? You set a equal, and if you can solve that equation, obviously that equation is going to be crazy, but one of the roots is going to be tangent 5. What are the other roots? Something for you to think about. Okay, so tangent 5 we were able to find by working backwards. Now, I'm going to show you another method to find tangent 5 from tangent 10, and this is also very cool. So, this is kind of like my second method, part B, or maybe uh, third method. How about whatever you want to call this, but it's another approach. Let's call it. How about that? Another approach. Okay. Now, another approach to find tangent 5 from tangent, a, tangent 10. So, tangent 10 in degrees, of course, is equal to x. So, and I'm trying to find tangent 5. Okay, great. So, since 10 and 5 are both acute angles, they are really acute, right? I can just draw a right triangle. And of course, this is in no way drawn to scale, but you know, just pretend that this is 10 degrees. Okay, fine, I'm gonna put the degree symbol here. I know some people are complaining about it all the time. But anyways, tangent 10 is equal to x. So can I just name these sides, the legs x and 1, because the ratio needs to be x. So great, you got this part. Pythagorean theorem tells us that the hypotenuse is gonna be square root of x squared plus 1. Easy, right? Now here's the awesome trick. I really love this trick because it allows you to cut an angle in half. So extend the base, if you want to name this triangle ABC, extend AC as much as BC. So what happens if you extend AC as much as BC? The length here becomes the square root of x squared plus 1, and you get, you get an isosceles triangle. So these two sides are congruent. Great. What does that tell you? Well, the base angles needs to be congruent. By using it, what, what's it? Exterior angle theorem. We know that alpha plus alpha is equal to 10. Then alpha has to be 5. So this needs to be 5 degrees and this needs to be 5 degrees. And what does that tell you? That tells you that tangent 5 value can be found from here as well. And that is going to equal opposite over adjacent, which is x divided by the square root of x squared plus 1 plus 1. But why is that not the same thing as that one? Because we can use the conjugate, multiply by the conjugate, and you're going to get the answer. Let's go ahead and do it. Square root of x squared plus 1 minus 1. Multiply both the top and the bottom by that. So in, essentially you're multiplying in the, by 1 over 1, or just 1. And from here you're going to get the tangent 1 value, and that is going to equal tangent 5 equals when you multiply these, notice that you're going to get x times the square root of x squared plus 1 minus 1 divided by, from difference of two squares, it's going to be x squared plus 1 minus 1. The 1 cancels out, and the x and 1 of the x squared cancels out, and we get the value of tangent 5 as the square root of x squared plus 1 minus 1 all over x, which is the same expression that we found here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.